On this one, we're going to talk a little roster construction, team build on Superflex, tight end premium, uh, dynasty startup, dynasty startup drafts. Let's so it. um, in, in this particular one, we're going to zoom in on, on, a, on one particular mock, but you know, we've got plenty of uh, ones that we've done in, in this fashion. And there's some other ones in this particular mock. We're going to zoom in on Big Co's team. Basically, we've, we went no quarterback or he went no quarterback uh, for a while. And then we're going to figure out how to navigate the the QB landscape when you do that and, and the rationales of, of why and how. And then we're going to go through like the building the other parts of the team. Maybe several videos on you YouTube people, but on the podcast, you'll catch it all in one. So, all right, right off the rip, let's just go through your four picks. I know that was for the people out there. Right off the rip. Uh, that was for the people out there. Um, I'm not drinking because I've been sick. Uh, this voice is sorry about it. If it's given out on me, I'm trying my best. I don't know why I can't get this thing back. It's not sultry. Yeah. Um, you have Justin Jefferson, Puka Nakua, Drake London, and Nico Collins. Those are your, those are your first four picks. Now, you know, some people are like, Hey, I got, I got to get these quarterbacks early and often. And I think that's kind of some of the crux of the conversation is like, for a while, I'm, I've been okay playing this way. I'm not going to get hamstrung by having to take the quarterbacks. If, if it's the proper value and right, I will. It, it's nice to take two and set it and forget it and not have to do it. But I don't think you have to. Um, I do like kind of playing it the way I play the running back nowadays of hammering one stud. And so like one stud quarterback, one stud running back, and then wide receivers and tight ends for a while. Okay. And then figure out the running back. But I think this is, is also a good strategy, especially if the players fall right. Uh, and I think I think there's a lot of good insight to, to the hows and whys of how this can work. And I think this is a little bit of ode to old school when the running back thing was changing. I'm not saying we're going to have a big shift away from st- quarterbacks and startups, but like there there was an advantage from zigging and zagging when everybody was drafted running backs you were getting great value on some of these receivers and then the tide slowly turned and now you know you could get value on some running backs and now there's some people being like all right well if it falls right then there's still really good value on running back don't not draft the running back it just got a little too crazy right so i'm not necessarily saying that's what the deal is with the quarterback because i just said all that before that but I think that's kind of a little bit of a version of this is you can you can get really good value because there's so much quarterback action going on uh, in the first couple of rounds. So what's the thought process here on your first four picks, Big Co? Well, everything you just said is is obviously accurate. Everybody's hot and heavy on the Superflex quarterbacks, and you should. I've said it before, like the name of your league will tell you the value of the positions. It's a Superflex tight end premium league. So you you need to have quarterbacks. Uh, and that's the, the the situation here is uh, earlier in the season, earlier in the off season, January, February, all my mocks, you know, a couple of quarterbacks at the beginning, uh, rounds three through eight, just see how many nice, shiny wide receivers I can stack up and maybe not even draft with running backs till later with the idea of going, hey, maybe I'll have a spot on my in my starting lineup really sucking every week and help me do a little productive struggle without actually being, you know, bad. I, you know, the heartbeat of my team is good. I just don't have good running backs right now. And, th- and, and this is, you know, this is not the way to draft for sure. Um, the, the way to do it is probably get a good run, get a good, get a good quarterback. You can do it any way. There is no way. But you I wanted to build, exactly. Way. I wanted to build a good example of, you know, zig and zag and whatever you want to call it. I wanted to build a good option. I wanted to show an option. Um, and, you know, yeah, six, eight years ago, I would have been running back heavy. I would have had, you know, Le'Veon Bell and Zeke would have been my first two picks because I would have traded up to get Le'Veon Bell and Zeke. And then, you know, two years ago, I would have been saying, hey, let me get two quarterbacks and I want my third quarterback by the sixth or seventh round. I want that to be my third so I can have some currency to trade or be able to deal with that injury or, you know, be able to move around. And so I'm just, you know, trying to be fluid here, kind of seeing, you know, Justin Jeff, th- this was the one five spot, so I had to kind of force this, you know, e- exercise on this this mock because I didn't get one seven, six, seven, or eight. You know, passing on Lamar Jackson and Joe Burrow, that's not going to be the the popular thing to do in a super flex startup. Right. The beauty of this is, you know, we'll show it, we'll lay it out. It's the idea. The idea. There's no trades in the mock, obviously. Um, and and you know, let me go ahead and get this out of the way since I haven't been here in a while. Every league is different. Every manager is different. Just had the prime example in FFPC league 
Caleb Williams went one five in one of our st- startup. I mean, one of our rookie drafts, non premium, non premium, non pr- I mean, pr- non tight end premium, non super flex. Yeah. So it was a one quarterback league, and Caleb Williams went one five. And in another league that I'm in that you're not in, Caleb Williams fell all the way to two four to me. So it takes twelve managers to let that happen. It's not like he went one four in one league and one six in another league, and he quote unquote fail. You know, he fed, there was 12 pick yeah. difference there. So every, every startup you do would be, you know, different managers. If it's all going to be different, but in all the trades that we talk about, they're not easy to make happen. This mock, no trade straight down the line. All the picks I made, Justin Jefferson, Puka, Drake London, N- Nico Collins. So thought process there is I got my two wide receiver spots full. And I think by the time we get done with this, I think I can show you why I'm contending this year. And those first four sp- first four picks, Nico's the oldest. He's twenty five. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's you know, I at, at Justin Jefferson, best wide receiver to this day to, to to as many games played. He's the best wide receiver in the history of the game. We'll see where he goes from here, but nobody's ever done more with less games than him. Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free Discord channel. Or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, and also our 2024 Rookie Draft Kit, complete with rookie rankings, ADP, and player pages. All for your pleasure. Puka obviously set all the records as a rookie. That's a fun pick. He's super, he's, everybody's darling. Everybody loves Puka. So the value that's insulated into Puka right now, obviously got an old quarterback throwing to him, but Stafford, you know, he got a year or two left, but Puka seems to be. have four years left. Quick quick count my man out. Come on, man. Let's go, Stafford. Let's play forever. So the biggest, you know, I don't want to say it was a reach, but I got Jalen, I got Drake London at 3-8. So that's the Kirk Cousins bump. Looking for, had a plan going in. So it was kind of like, you know, spoiler alert, I got Kirk Cousins in a little bit. So it's like, I got Kirk Cousins, Drake London stack there. So I could have, Jalen Waddle goes next. So I got Drake London at 3-8. I could have easily taken Jalen Waddle, could have easily taken Brandon Ayuk. Could, in, a real, in a real league, you trade back a pick or three and you pick up a little something for and not have to make that pick there, quote unquote, early. Uh, was prepared if Malik Neighbors fell down that far to maybe take him, but he's necessarily not, proven either you know mm-hmm. um so those first three and then i might be a little higher on some people than for nico collins nico collins sure. might might slide back three or four or five spicks you know five spots from there i don't know um but the point of that the point of this exercise is for me to show you like last year you know of course you know the vikings are going to be without nick kirk cousins now but last year justin jefferson 20 points a game right so my first pick justin jefferson 20 points a game last year Patrick Mahomes, 18 point in an 18 and a half points game. Sure, he didn't have any wide receivers. Jalen Hurts, 22. Lamar, 21. And the best of all, Josh Allen is 24. Anthony Richardson, per drop back, you know, per game, take out the game where he got hurt and left really, really early, 23. Nobody else is 20 is above 20. So I just said all that, you know, and I'd say Patrick Mahomes because he's the one, 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 two in every startup draft. He only averaged 18 and a half with, you know, no yeah. wide receivers. That's what Justin Jefferson averaged, that's 18 what, and a half. That's what Justin averaged. And, and, and he had a game where he, the game he went out, he had 5.8. Exactly. So that, you know, it's going to skew. So that's, and, and that's, I mean, I got 20 here. before, he was like 21 points. Depending on what site you look at, uh, you know, I don't know if this was through week, week 18 or week 17. I just clicked the name on Sleeper. It shows me a points per game in PPR last year. Um, obviously, the quarterback should be pretty standard across the line because that has nothing to do with catching passes. Um, you know, so... Justin Herbert, 18 and a half. Kyler Murray, 19. Uh, Brock Purdy, 18. Dak, 20 points. So that my point is, my first pick, it scores the exact same amount of points as any other quarterback in the league outside of the three or four that was already drafted before I got my got on the clock. Mm-hmm. You know, so my, I, and it's a wide receiver. So you, you'll see where I'm going with this. So Puka, 17 and a half points last year per game. So my second pick, Scores as many points as almost every other good wide receiver. Drake London, sure. There's no passing game in Atlanta the last two years. He only scored 11 points a game. Drake London, my third pick. I could have taken Tyreek Hill and gotten 20-something points a game. Like I said, I could have taken Waddle. He scores 15 a game last year. I yoked 15 and a half a game last year. I took the bump on Drake London there. Again, stacking him with Cousins later, and he's 22 years old. Mm-hmm. So, like, I think I'm got. I think through three rounds, I have really good players that are going to be in my lineup every week. I'm not, you know, no, none of them are rookies. None of them we haven't ever seen play before, etc. 
Drake London may or may not do what I want him to do, but I think we all expect him to be in that Waddle I Rook fifteen I uh, Yook fifteen points a game range. And then Nico, he averaged a, a, a fancy seventeen and a half points a game last year. You know, bring Tank Dale back, bring in Stefan Diggs. Maybe he drops down a little bit. Um, Diggs doesn't scare me in Dynasty for Nico Collins. Maybe this year with Diggs there and it's a little bit mixed up. I I expect that offense to take another step. Stroud did all we ever could ever ask out of a rookie quarterback last year. So in those first four picks, again, you know, if you say what you want to say about Drake London, pretend he's Jalen Waddle. He was Jalen Waddle was on the board when I made that pick. I got 20 points a game. I got 17 and a half points a game. I got 15 if it's Waddle. I got 10 at Drake London. And I got 17 out of Nico. Go down, call it 16 out of Nico, you know? So I got my two wide receivers filled with 22 and 24 year old players. And then my next two wide receivers is in my flex is 22 and 25 years old. So, right. You know, and I'm, that- I'm not productively struggling yet, but I'm not old. And I'm not, and I'm still good. Like I'm not giving up anything. Obviously, there's a question mark on Drake London, as I've noted. Yeah, and I mean, you know, this is. Uh, I, I think, you know, to be fair to the conversation, I think what maybe triggered you to look at a build like this being a viable option um, is probably a reference of another team that you have that that puts up, you know, potentially could be of similar points of this. You know, that, that you have a team with CMC. Justin Jefferson, Tyreek, and Amon Ross St. Brown, right? Yeah, good point. So I, when I told you this is what I wanted to talk about and why, I got a team that dominated in the last couple of years, and and it had I do have Dak, and I got Patrick Mahomes. And, yeah, that was Patrick Mahomes. Again, Patrick Mahomes brings all this glamour. It's been five years since he threw 50 touchdown passes. Mm-hmm. The consistency is what we love about Patrick Mahomes and the fact that, you know, you can bank on it. You know, 18 points a game every week for, you know, you talk about, you know, 10 years, like obviously – you know, you, if yeah, you look, I mean, if you go back and look at your redundancy you would, you're roster, you're not going to be surprised if this year, if he's 23, 26 points a game. Absolutely. It will not shock you at all. We've already seen it. Um, but last year he got me 18. So, I, my, so Deshaun Watson gets 18 points a game last year. Patrick Mahomes gets 18 points a game last year. Mm. So last year I, you know, I got this team that's been, that's dominating in one of my dynasty leagues, but I got Justin Jefferson and I got, uh, Amara St. Brown. So plug in Puka into that spot. And I got, um, Tyreek Hill, I did plug in Drake London because he's eight years younger, but I could have taken Dr- Tyreek Hill. He's there for me to take. Yeah, I here, mean, you, you can know? still probably buy Tyreek Hill if you wanted to. But the point, of the what got my mind thinking was is that is that every week points per game that my team was scoring, you know, mm-hmm. and so because I had studs, and you know, you know, there is no CMC in this build, and that that build did, that team didn't come out of a startup last year either. It's been over a couple years with some good lucky trades and some draft picks and all that fun stuff. But the point was, I was getting decent to solid quarterback points and obviously Dak was scoring in the top six last year so but Dak's not like you just said on the last video that we made Dak's underappreciated and and you know loved by few and hated by just as many uh so like I, I was getting decent quarterback points and and real solid out of Dak you could plug in Dak for Purdy right now it would have been the same points per game you know mm-hmm. um but because my wide receivers were stacked and because my flex spots were stacked and I did have you know, CMC, then I was just crushing on a week to week basis. So I'm not going to come out of this draft with CMC. Obviously you got to figure out um, in this build, I'll figure out uh, running backs later, but I got four players on my team and I don't think, yes, again, the London, there's a slight gamble there, but his, you know, catches per on target pass are up there. His efficiency ratings are up there. He's a study six, four, um, you know, his, his target share on the team is enormous. They just don't throw the ball and his catchable pass rate is horrible because they had Desmond Ritter. And I told you to not do anything with him last year. You know, there was Drake London has done all he could do to be on the Falcons, you know? Um, so I just feel like my first four picks are studs. If you don't want to take Drake London, don't take Drake London. If you don't like Nico Collins, don't take Nico Collins. I think they're all, I think those, those four guys are studs and I'm super happy with those first four picks. Now I got to figure out quarterback. Right. Um, and I real, real quick, I want to, we'll, we'll get to the quarterback thing in just a second. Feel free to poke any holes you want to poke. No, no. I mean, it's fine. You know, you, you mentioned a couple things for, from the, from that other build that, you know, aren't really possible of coming out of a startup with, but I mean, at the end of the day, you you can get pretty close to what you were saying. You just, you know, you could have had CMC in this draft if you, if you really wanted to. Um, but you know, you would have had to take him where you took puka and nobody's really doing that but you know puka's kind of closest to 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 st brown and points and and hopefully we'll get there 
Um, Justin Jefferson's on that team, and you could acquire a Tyreek, and you have two shots at younger guys of, of Drake and Nico being up there. And obviously, you know, you need to replace the CMC points one way or another. Um, but like you said, that's it's hard to get out of the startup with – you're you're always going to be punting somewhere somehow some you know so that what you try to do is come out of the startup with enough equity and and liquidity to be able to go acquire the you know if you need Tyree Kill in season I got I'm able to go figure out with different ways I drafted to go pick up Tyree Kill if that's what I need on this team right um, so you know that, that's a good one but I did want to you know just look, you know one other team two other teams in this particular mock went with this same strategy. And, you know, regardless of what, you know, th- this one right here, I think is, is kind of perfect. Jamar Chase. So Jamar Chase can score Justin Jefferson like points. We, we, yeah, we, definitely. We've seen definitely. it. Amon Ross St. Brown. Yep. That's yeah. Christian McCaffrey. Okay. And then Devonta Smith. So, sure. so you know, Devonta Smith is low man on the totem pole here. Yep. But we've, Devonta just goes out there and, and is good week in, week out. Once again, it's going to be really hard to get all four of those players that you were talking about on this other team to come out of the startup with, but he has, he has he damn near three it. of the four. Yeah. And you know, you just need to, and ask, you know, somebody else throughout this draft to smash mm-hmm. and, and you're right there. So exactly. Uh, that, that's the ability there. And then the next guy over did the same thing. He's got Bijan to start it off with. So, you know, that's your Christian McCaffrey or right. your Justin Jefferson. And he's younger, but he had to do it in the first round. So he gave up. Garrett Wilson could easily be in Justin Jefferson's category. If I don't correct quarterback s- play. I don't want to. The way he I, moves, the way he plays, what he can do, we've seen it in a very limited window of how good he can be. He can. He has I, the ability to be up in the stratosphere. He's already at two five. He's one right. pick after St. Brown. <laughs> right. I'm not going to say anybody can easily be as good as Justin. But he's Jefferson. right there. I, he, I'm going to pump the brakes I, I on think, that. I think he can. I I think he could work his tail off and strive to be he just Justin a Jefferson. fucking quarterback. Uh, I don't, that isn't Zach Wilson. You can be a really great receiver and not easily be anywhere yeah, near well, he's Justin awesome. Jefferson. Uh, uh, he's already fine. up there, You can so. be all the, Justin Jefferson is above, like seven layers above awesome. So anyway, keep going. Yeah. I like Garrett Wilson just the same, but I yeah. not, Well, not. what I'm saying is yes. he, he can turn into 20 points a game, 22 yes. points a game without yes. any problem. Yes. And that's Justin Jefferson territory. Um, maybe not for as long, but then you got Malik Neighbors, which is unknown. I'm fine with taking that shot there, uh, but you know th- that that doesn't give you quite the the mock up of of model that you were looking at because it's unknown with neighbors. But with neighbors, Fair you enough. Could, his stock is his stock, his stock is, is high, and you stock can, is safe. You can neighbors is now a stepping stone if mm-hmm. you want him to be. You don't even have to play a single game with neighbors, but then to get up into Garrett Wilson, Alvin Ross, St. Brown, Puka Nakua territory. It's just like we talk about with quarterbacks. You got to have one to trade right, one. Yes. If you can have a guy who could be elite, and yes. it, it's a lot easier to get up in there Great to trade point. you the mystery if, box. If you got neighbors, you can add something to neighbors to get this Amon Ross St. Brown, and right. you might not want to make that trade. And maybe, got maybe that's a terrible trade in two years, but you I know, would do it. Right. Uh, it's a no. And then you have Pittman, who's just, you know, consistent. Stuck. And, you know, you, you just you need Anthony Richardson to be as good as we think he can be, uh, but <laughs> probably going to score fantasy points with that. So that brings us to the next. All those guys, including you, took quarterbacks with the next pick. So that's why I kind of wanted to bring th- those rosters are the same kind of deal. Yep. And I, I like that. All those guys and picks. Great example, I think, as well for kind of what you're talking about here. So, all right. Now we have to navigate the landscape of the quarterback here and what you're going to do about it through, you know, five through eight, nine, ten here. So what are your thoughts? What are you doing? And, and, and how are you approaching it? Well, uh, I like that you called out those teams because obviously in the fifth round when I got those first four wide receivers, um, I believe as this was happening, Jared Goff got paid. Maybe it was already done, but I think we all assume, it was already in the talks in the last two weeks leading up through this uh, date that this mock was happening that the Goff and the Lions were knee-deep in negotiations, and, and so we knew that was coming. Um, so in the fifth round, I'm like, I hope I get a chance at Goff. We, we've talked about Tua recently. Tua goes, so both of these teams that you just mentioned, one of them takes golf, one of them takes Tua. Both of those guys had to pick in the fifth round before me. And then, I, so I take Deshaun Watson. I assumed that Deshaun Watson would go later in the draft. I assumed he may hang around. His ADP is like two rounds lower. But when you don't have a quarterback yet, he was like my cutoff line of, you know, if you take one, of the, one game last year, Deshaun Watson had like minus 8.8 points. So obviously, you know, he, basically zero points and so if you take that one game out where he got hurt in you know the first quarter whatever stat that was he was he scored nothing he got minus 0.8 take that out he had 18 points a game 
you know, he's 28 years old or something like that. And the Browns did nothing but get better this year. Again, they bring in Jerry Judy. They're basically going all in and, you know, the same type of way that the Titans are to build around Levis to see if Levis is any good to see what they need to do. The Browns are like, dude, we go, we are, we're going to pay this dude 150 million. No matter what we might as well at least try to be good while he's here. We got an elite defense. Mm-hmm. So good for the ti- good for the Browns. Good for Deshaun Watson. And, and Deshaun Watson might not be the taste that the flavor that you want. And I understand that. And 18 points a game, Joe Burrow, 18 points a game, Trevor Lawrence, 16 points a game Brock Purdy 18 points a game you know we expect Jordan Love to take a, tr- a step up but you know Kyler Moore at Murray 19 points a game sure coming back from injury there, you know there's some upside those were hey Deshaun Watson is washed and he's terrible looking plays mm-hmm. you know he's so he's not out there on the fourth year of a rookie quarterback contract like Justin Fields where he's like getting traded for a six round pick my man still got 150 million guaranteed he's at least a starter for a year or two and is there gamble in this? Yes, there's a gamble in this. And when I get done talking to you about my team, maybe none of these quarterbacks are on my team in two years, you know, but the point, once I get going on my team and I show you how I'm going to push the throttle on my team, maybe I'm trade. Maybe I'm Deshaun Watson is in a trade with me in week four, week eight, week 12. He might not be on my team. It might take longer than that for people to become, you know, to get, to get in back in love with him. Well, and it's a, you know, it's a good time to reiterate that, you know, the first four picks that weren't quarterbacks are all young guys. So if, if you can, you can pivot and you can move around, you're not really hamstrung to being like, Hey, I have to win this year. Uh, we can, we can take some shots here in these middle rounds of on these quarterbacks. And if they pan out, then I'm going to be awesome. And if they don't, then I, you know, I gotta, I gotta move around and, this and be fluid. And, and some of these picks in here, I think help you, uh, do that. Well, and again, you know, being, being, the startup mock and not being able to make any trades to say, okay, well, I was going to take, I want Deshaun Watson, but with everybody left on the, on the, on the board here, I, you know, Xavier Worthy's the one nine in almost every super flex draft right now. Nobody's giving you Deshaun, giving you one nine for Deshaun Watson, you know? So like you can look, but like we can't have this conversation the right way to make this podcast. If I don't take Deshaun Watson, Mm-hmm. If somebody gets him in front of me, that's not like I texted everybody in the league. It's like, Hey, let Deshaun Watson slide to me in next round. So I can make a podcast out of this. Mm-hmm. So I take him in the middle of the fifth. So, but again, 18 points a game. Now I got my starting quarterback. If there wasn't question marks around him and you, Brock Purdy is at three, seven, he's 18 points a game and you don't care if he goes up at all. 18 points a game is 18 points a game. Brock Purdy, you know, I got about 19 too, but who Brock Purdy at three, seven, yeah, I'm saying 19 two points per game. Okay, we're, okay, click semantics. You know, semantics. All right, so one point again. Yeah, who who knows? Um, who knows where that week 17, 18 cutoff was when I click these numbers? So same, close enough. Um, so I like Deshaun Watson. I personally like what the fact that it looked terrible last year and it was 18 points a game. Yeah, I've been singing those praises all damn since he stopped playing. You like, know, and it, it was terrible and it was still decent, still good. Still good, exactly, and, it, and it, it looked bad, and it was still good. So, I, I mean, I would imagine it's going to be a little bit better. And if not, a little pie in my face. Again, I still got I still got a fine team. Even if it's not better, if it's just the same, the floor was pretty freaking solid. Right. So, comes back around. I got Brian Thomas, rookie, mm. mystery box, value add kind of guy. Um, and Brian Thomas might not be, I mean, Lad McConkey was on the board. I already drafted Lad McConkey in front of Brian Thomas in a, in a rookie draft this year. It's fine. Um, it was more of just like, just taking one here and going quarterback next. Didn't want to pound, you know, the purple box two in a row. I was just like, Hey, let me get basically got my two wide receivers, got my two flexes full. Now I got a rookie wide receiver first round draft pick in this, in the, in the NFL draft, first round draft pick in a super flex draft on my bench like you know like we talk about it all the time hey let me get let me get my upside rising star best equity best equity best player available not player but you know what is it best asset available mm-hmm. let me get my best asset available and then i'll come back with my you know hollywood brown types three or four rounds from now and pile in some starters that i feel good about immediately so then we go around to the next round pick seven eight kirk cousins Next round comes back around. I take Penix. So now I'm feeling real good about myself. I got Kirk Cousins, 
35, 36 year old quarterback coming back off of his leg fell off last year. So you can only feel really good about that. But I got his backup. Right. The eighth round, the eighth overall pick in the NFL draft. This man, Penix, is walking into a team. If you took Kirk Cousins out of this team, Penix is what, one four, one five, one six in a super flex draft? I mean, you know, begrudgingly, a lot of people would have to do it. Sure. I and mean, for me, he'd probably be one three or four. Right. So, yeah, exactly. Suck it, haters. We won the Penix war. Yeah, no doubt. So, but I, so the beauty of this is my team, I got both. So I got Penix for the long haul. If Cousins get hurt, Penix is coming right in. Mm. Maybe you're trying to do this similar build in another league and Penix gets sniped and you don't stack that. I wouldn't overreach to stack that, but I felt good when I made it happen. So now I've got in the last four rounds, I got three quarterbacks in four rounds and I felt like, you know, I took Penix, Mayfield was on the board, Levis was on the board. Obviously, I had cousins, so those two to to me those felt good. Cousins yeah. comes back, gets hurt. Penix is in my starting lineup. Cousins plays well. Penix is on my bench. Cousins is playing well, mm-hmm. so I got a quarterback. I got my second quarterback is playing well, so I'm doing you know I'm fine. If if Penix is if Cousins is playing so well that Penix is on the bench and we're not talking about it and healthy, then I'm fine because now I got a stud and Penix is sitting on my bench. And if you know when that happens, or if Penix plays so good. We've never, in the last couple of years in the NFL, we've seen more trades with more quote unquote dead cap and ridiculousness goes, going around. Somehow, some way, if Penix is the best quarterback ever, if it, Penix is the next Joe Burrow coming in, Cousins will end up somewhere else if, they, if he needs to be. Even if it's 24 months, maybe less, it's, it's fine. Right. Good for the Falcons. Yeah. Um, and good for my fantasy team right here. Uh, so do you want me to go past eight or you want to do that four? Let me put the button on it with the other receiver. You could do one more. All right, because I got Deshaun Watson, Brian Thomas, Cousins and Penix back to back, and then it came back around to me and I took Leggett. So now and I, in the second phase of this draft, the first phase was my first four picks with wide receivers, and the second phase is three quarterbacks and two more and, and two rookie wide receivers. So, again – I don't need Brian Thomas or Leggett to be starting because I'm full of my, you know, if you, if this is just a two flex, if you play in an extra, if you play in a super deep bench or stu- super deep starting lineup, then, you know, right. adjust, adjust as necessary. Uh, but now I got Watson as my starting quarterback, Cousins in my super flex, Penix backing up Cousins, and Brian Thomas and Leggett sitting there as values and equity and commodities on my bench and, hopefully ready to take off and soar right and and you know the idea of thomas and and leggett are are players that you could do one of two things with you can trade because you know that's somewhere around for the most part a first round pick right now in right in startup so that that's kind of their value overall and and people kind of know that so i think that's an easy value for people to gauge and and get trades going with now maybe you don't like brian thomas like you said that's you, totally you fine. could go you could go lad mcconkey maybe you don't like leggett you could go ad mitchell there you could go pierce all there you you could have some other, you could plug some other rookies it's the idea of having those guys who uh, the perception of the value is already there the, the, they could go way up they're they're semi insulated here for at least most of the off season right um, let me jump in there cuz sure. i'm glad like those picks those two Brian Thomas in the 6th round Leggett in ninth round and those other some of those other rookies slide in that scale like the biggest thing about them was it's not Terry McLaurin it's not Devonte Adams and these are names right around in here uh you know it's not it's not Debo in the 6th it's not Devonte in the 8th you know, it's not Deontay Johnson in the ninth. Although, you know, Debo Samuel, Devontae Adams, and Deontay Johnson are going to help me win games this year, most certainly way more consistently than Leggett and Thomas. But I've already got my four consistent players up top. Mm-hmm. Obviously, in, you know, injuries and bye weeks, but just, you know, that's this middle of the, this is where in the middle of the rounds of the startup draft, and when I, let's just say middle as in like the first 12 rounds, I'm in the middle, like six, seven, eight, nine. That's where you take, to me, that's where you want to be taking some home run cuts. In the middle, yeah, you know, I didn't take four in a row. I, in another mock that we just did the other night, I did four, four in a row. But, like, you know, Christian Kirk, probably going to come in here and be Mr. Consistency and tear it up this year with catches in a PPR league. I think Christian Kirk's going to crush. You can buy Christian Kirk a lot cheaper than you can buy Brian Thomas or Leggett. Um, 
Marquise Hollywood Brown, 8 4. Took him, you know, he, he went before Leggett, around before Leggett, but he went two rounds after Brian Thomas. Marquise Brown could easily go out there and just kill it this year with the, with the Chiefs. Well, I hope gonna. he, I, I pretty much 80% expect it and 100% hope for it because I got some Hollywood on a team that I really want to win. And so just that, that's the point is those seasoned veterans that you can count on for some consistency but also counting on being depreciating assets can be had later for at this pretty much same value or most likely less value later now we talked about this a couple of weeks ago when i was here you know when we were talking about um saquon barkley and josh jacobs types guys if you know if if mclaurin all of a sudden has a stud in Jaden daniels mclaurin's not going to be is easily to maybe his value goes up a little bit because he's catching you know accurate bombs 50 yards downfield you know maybe i just i just don't know which you know if deontay johnson is actually you know we know we know he's going to be open because that's what he does he gets paid to get open and he's good at his job Mm -hmm. sometimes he doesn't catch but he's really good at getting open but can bryce young get him the ball eight times a game is he going to be eight for 80 because if he is he's going to be an absolute monster I think he's going to get 10 targets. Okay. Is he going to catch? He's be just fine. You know, is it seven for 70, 14 points a game? I'll take that. Mm-hmm. Which one is it? Is Cooper Cup going to be healthy this year and crush? Or is he going to fall off? The, you know, no matter what happens on any of those scenarios, they're all of those guys in the long. Even, yes, Terry McLaurin's killing it. Zoom in to week three. He's on a contender's team. No, but they don't really want to trade him right this second. That's fine. Zoom out. My man's 29 years old. He ain't getting no younger. They're all going down. I put two guys on my team that probably are going up or at least got drafted early enough in the draft, got skills and and God-given talent and measurables to keep them in a certain level, best asset available, and I'll work around that as we move forward. Yeah. Yeah, I I think there's a whole longer version of this conversation. Much longer. But I don't. I uh, we'll want to moving. jump into it at this particular juncture here. How much time you got, buddy? I did want to go over here and just look at the other two teams that, Please, that did sure the same the, thing. And, and yeah. um, you know, they took off and Tua, like you said, and then one of them took Lad, so that's kind of right on pace. And then he came back and took Knicks and Mayfield, which not exactly. all that, not all that different than what you did, except not the backup uh, for the guy. He, he he now has three quote unquote starters. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I'm in the seventh eighth ninth round that you know i love uh, baker in the eighth all day long will levis is interesting in that and, that and that's the next guy who uh didn't didn't take the quarterbacks at the top with the with those other two rosters uh you had two and he took will levis and then later he took daniel jones um in the 12th round i love that daniel jones in the 12th and i really like the josh jacobs pacheco that he sandwiched he took two he had this is the guy jamar chase saint brown christian mccaffrey DeMarta, devonta smith those are four studs in your lineup and Jamar Chase and St. Brown are not old. Neither is Devonta Smith. I love that. And he does have Christian McCaffrey. So he's coming out. And he's ready to roll. Tua. Ready to roll. Scoring points. For all, you know, mm. Brazilian jiu-jitsu aside, well, whatever. If, hap- if he had a contract signed with the Dolphins, I think everybody feels a lot better. He's probably back up to the third round. Yeah. So, and then he goes Jacobs and Pacheco, where, you know, I went Brian Thomas and Kirk Cousins. And so, Je- he's obviously starting week one. He's better than me. He's starting week one. He's better than me because he's got Jacobs and Pacheco as an RB2 and RB3. I don't even have running backs yet. But also, he's, you know, he's got running backs where injuries a little bit more, odds are, that kind of thing. Now, you could say Pacheco is not necessarily any more likely to get hurt than my 36-year-old co- cousins coming back with, from a Achilles that's, you know, ruptured. So the arguments can be made. I think I really like this team. I like where he went. He took the gamble on Levis. Everything that all the – quarterback quote-unquote guru said about levis showed up last year i got i got stafford on that levis t i like the levis pick and then i would have come back at nine four with stafford in there and really know know that i have two good starters and if levis explodes great yeah that's good i would have rather had that and then then i feel good about that hey derrick henry's great and all mm -hmm. but i like give me the other quarterback that like stafford is is my parachute in these builds every single time you didn't need it but in his case he could take levis and if Levis explodes, great. You get whatever the hell you want from him or play him. But you got to you gotta put Stafford or somebody else on that team underneath him. And I, and I still would take Daniel Jones later. I'm fine with that. Uh, so I didn't mean to cut you off. but that No, no. And just, so this, t- this dude's name is BMAT15. And here he got a Chicago Bears symbol. 
I I really love what he ended up doing with his team. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, he he took Cooper into tenth. He took he like he. I like the call that you're saying. Take Stafford. He took he took Derrick Henry nine four. He took Derrick Henry. Then he goes to Mari Cooper, Ferguson. Oh, steal in the eleventh. And Derek and Daniel Jones. I mean, Amar, so I mean, obviously Henry and Cooper are older, but like Ferguson and Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones, you know, stock up from the draft. I mean, and then, I would have taken Benson instead of Pacheco, but. Yeah, and I mean that's fine too. But Pacheco yeah. could easily be Pacheco's a running back points. one this year. He's going to score you know? points. So I, I really like, and I like the way he finishes up his team. So I like that. And the other guy, like you said, the Bo Nix Mayfield back to back picks. Um, he's got quarterbacks. If, if Bo Nix yeah, he, works he's out, okay. he's fine. If Bo, I would like you know? to see him get another guy like a Derek Carr or a Daniel Jones down here. Sure. A little later too, just to get one more that that, that could be a starter for you. Um, if Nix isn't humming or working out, or Nix is exploding and crushing it. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, and then he, he took a, another rookie a little later, uh, he got commit in the 11th. So I think that's good. You know, got, got him tight end. So those all, both of those, uh, builds ended up being pretty good. And I, you know, I would change them up a little bit to, to parachute a little bit more on my quarterback build, but I just wanted to highlight those two, uh, real quick. So, uh, let's, let's talk about the back half of this draft, but we're going to stop this video here. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below, follow along, and then come over here and, um, and grab and come watch the, the back half of this draft, how, how we're going to navigate the the the, uh, the running backs, which ones he likes, which ones we I think we should take kind of must draft running backs there. And then, you know, we, you got to punt a position. So we're kind of punting the running back where we're going to get him. But it seems like maybe the, the punt is on for the tight end. So it's hard to come out of a draft in Dynasty and not punt a position. Um, and so let's let's uh, take a break here. Uh, be sure to like subscribe you get on patreon and get in all these mocks please watch um, the next video free, and see me wrap this thing up free discord also gets you in some of these mocks as well also follow along with the ff dynasty on twitter that, that can get you some mocks because we throw them all out over the place but consistently in the patreon five dollar how we got a, a draft kit of, of all sorts of stats and information on all the rookies we got rookie uh, rankings all that stuff be sure to check that out and we'll catch you next time